Hi right, guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy and we're going to do some ball testing. This is the first of many ball tests coming your way. And I've started with the big dogs, the Pro V1s, Titleist Pro V1 and Pro V1X. These are the brand new models starting this year. Now this whole review, this test, started about three weeks ago because I had the opportunity to be out in Spain at Lumina Golf Resort and I wanted to test these golf balls from the green and work my way backwards until we hit some balls to the GC2. That was the whole idea. I wanted to see how it reacted on off the putter, how it felt, what the feelings I was getting on the chip shots, even on the pitch shots, with no data, just feel, straight out feel. Then I've come back in here today at Quest Golf Academy and hit the golf balls on GC2 and HMT. I hit 100 yard shots with a full sand wedge, I hit uh, seven iron full shots, and I've also hit full shots with the driver. I'll go through that testing a little bit in a moment. Let's get started with the, the initial testing. On the golf course, initial testing. Um, we've got two models of golf ball. We've got the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X. Generally, the, the differences between the two, normally, the Pro V1X is a little bit harder, doesn't spin as much. But a lot of talks around these golf balls this time that these, these two golf balls have almost swapped roles. You're actually going to get a little bit more spin from the Pro V1X. I wanted to see if that was the case. So what I also did when I was in uh, Lumina when I was doing the testing is I had my notepad and I was making loads of notes about the golf balls when I actually hit them. So I'll start off with those notes first because this was just all feel based. And you can only really get feel of a golf ball either just generally by the feel, sticking your teeth in it or sticking your fingernail in it, using it on the putter or, or chipping and pitching around the green. That's the only way you can feel a golf ball. You can't feel it off a driver when it's hitting it at over 100 miles per hour or at any speed for that matter. So Titleist Pro V1, this is the one with the black number on, the ball that I would normally gravitate towards when testing and I, and I normally use when I've used Pro V1s in the past. What I was finding from this particular golf ball is it was very soft off the putter, very soft. And I did putts from three different lengths, short putts, medium putts, and longer putts, three from each station with each golf ball. And I was finding that the Pro V1 had a very soft feel and it was very quiet off the putter, super quiet as I hit it, which was interesting. because that, that felt, it did feel super soft. Moving into the Pro V1X, so this is the one with a red number. Again, typically a little bit harder, normally a slightly higher compression ball. This time on the Pro V1X, it's almost like I've written the same thing. Soft off the putter and a quiet sound off the putter. And again, I did the three stations, short, medium, and long. And the reason why I was getting both of those two numbers, or, to, or uh, both of those same descriptions, is because the cover of these two golf balls is exactly the same. The cover is exactly the same. It's what's inside these golf balls changes the way they perform. So on putts, I wasn't seeing a single bit of difference. So, so far, I couldn't separate them on putting. I then did some chipping just off the side of the green. I hit three from the side of the green and I hit three kind of 40, 50 yard pitches as well off the fairway. Chips are out the rough and, and pitch are on the fairway. And for the Pro V1, I got the description of it felt soft and it it was high spin. So when I was throwing it in the green, it felt like it was grabbing quickly. That was, the, that was the sensation I was getting from the Pro V1. From the Pro V1X, I was getting soft feel and I've, I've described it as only good spin. I wasn't saying it high spin, that was interesting. For the Pro V1X being the red number, I was saying it just had good spin. So that would be the black box instead of the gold. The Pro V1X is the red number with the black box. That was saying for me, it was just good spin on chipping and pitching. So that was the bit of the on-course testing I wanted to do. And I didn't video it with data. I just wanted to get the feel, feel only. And that's what, how I would always advise any player to pick a golf ball. Pick it on feel first. How it feels off the putter and how it feels when you're chipping and pitching. So now I've come back inside and I've done some data testing. I hit the same golf ball from the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X, I've hit the same golf balls for two reasons. One, I wanted to test the durability, and I tested that even further at the end of the testing, and also I wanted some consistency, it was the same ball over and over. So, the 100 yard shots I hit with a 56 degree, brand new, tailor-made, um, spin-milled wedge, brand new, 
and I was finding these numbers. These are, these are numbers up on the screen. So as you can see, the Pro V1 is the red number at the top, or the red um, icon at the top, and the Pro V1X is the blue number, the blue icon. Um, so carry distances, what I did, I hit five with each ball, and I chose the best three shots. So I hit five with each and chose the best three because I wanted to find that consistency. I didn't want to take out, I wanted to take out any bad hits from me because that's not the ball's fault, that's my fault. So these are good hits. Um, the carry distance is exactly the same. I would say on this number, what we're looking for is spin rate and peak height. The spin rate, the Pro V1, which I've always known as being the highest spin ball, wasn't as spinny as the Pro V1X. The Pro V1X spun at 11,471. For a full sand wedge, that's high, 11,500. Compared to the Pro V1, which was just short of 11,000. So there was a good 500 RPM difference of spin, and that's quite substantial, that's quite a big difference. Peak height, I wasn't seeing a jot of difference. They were both peak heighting exactly the same. So I've seen no difference in height. So the only thing that had there was the Pro V1X was the higher spin golf ball from 100 yards. Um, and that was, that was across every single shot, not just the three that I picked, that was every shot spun higher. We move now back into the seven iron. So I was hitting full seven irons. This was the Ping I200, brand new again, never, almost never been hit apart from the review that I did. So I wanted them to be fresh grooves. Again, we're gonna look at two numbers. We're gonna look at peak height, and we're gonna look at spin rates. The same colors are happening again. Pro V1 is red, Pro V1X is blue. Um, let's look at the top lines first, and we can definitely see the Pro V1 went higher. I was finding a higher ball flight with the Pro V1, as opposed to the Pro, V1X, Pro V1X came out lower. Not much lower, but low enough. Spin rates. The Pro V1X had it again, but only just this time. Only 100 odd RPM, which isn't a lot. It's not a lot at all. Uh, ball speed was exactly the same. Carry distance was the same. And you can see there, I tried to do it in exactly the same hitting environment. So those shots, that's all the club data. They are so matched up, it's unreal. They are so closely matched, it is unreal. The thing I was just finding is the Pro V1X definitely had a higher peak flight. In fact, let's see what actually the peak height number was on those ones. Let me just pull that number up. Peak height with the Pro V1 was uh, peak height, when we're looking, peak 38 yards up in the air, where the Pro V1 had 36 yards up in the air. So a two yard height difference. Again, it's not a lot, but it's enough maybe to, to sacrifice that slightly less spin number. Now, the club that I would never really test balls on is the driver, only because you don't really see a great deal of difference between balls on a driver. Not much at all. We're gonna see a couple of numbers. We're gonna see spin rate again with these two golf balls, peak height and ball speed potentially, because that's something that's really changed here with these two golf balls. I, wouldn't, I would never read the spin numbers in a, in a driver shot, because it's so minimal it's untrue. And we see that, the spin numbers are almost identical. Pro V1X actually just slightly spun less, but we're talking next to nothing. Not even measurable, not even worth talking about. Carry distances, we can see similar. These were again, three shots out of the five that I hit. Carry distance was a 282 for the Pro V1 and 284 for the Pro V1X, nothing. But the one thing I did notice is the Pro V1X definitely had a lower ball flight, considerably lower and a much faster ball speed. So the ball speed was up four miles per hour and the height was much, much less. And we look at the club data there, the club data is identical. The club data, even the strike, there's a tiny, tiny bit of difference, but we're talking next to nothing. That's very interesting. The ball speed of the Pro V1X came out faster, which one's Pro V1X now, faster, and I was getting slightly less height. So that might be something that some players will look into, whether that lower flight and the ball coming out faster is gonna be beneficial to some players. But you can see there, there's not next to no difference. So that was very interesting. I found that, just to summarize those numbers, the Pro V1X had more spin on the 100 yard shot, had slightly more spin on the seven iron shots, and no difference in spin on the drivers. The Pro V1 had much higher ball flight, on the seven iron and the, and the driver shots, but wasn't as spinny 
as the Pro V1X. The Pro V1X I was getting more spin from generally, not on the driver so much, there was no difference. Pro V1X, four miles per hour faster off the ball speed from what the Tess and I did. And they would hit exactly the same club head speed. So that's quite a substantial difference and Pro V1X was lower flighted. So what I did then, I did a durability test. After I'd hit both these golf balls for the durability of that whole test, I then carried out another 10 shots with a full sand wedge, not on GC2, just off the side of the mountain, you can see it there, I hit 10 full shots with a sand wedge to see what the durability was like, to see how long these golf balls would last you, because they're expensive. I was mightily impressed. There's scuffing, yes, there is definite obvious scuffing, you can see it up on screen there, but after, so how many shots that, that's uh, the five, 10, 15, 25 shots, hit hard, hit into a net, which isn't probably, you know, the screen that I'm hitting it into in here, hitting it with brand new golf clubs with sharper than sharp grooves on the wedge and the seven iron. That's not bad, but it has scuffed. There's visible scuffing. I wouldn't use that golf ball in competitive play after that many shots. Same with the Pro V1X, exactly the same. I was seeing the same scuffing, because again, the covers are identical. I was seeing exactly the same sort of scuffings. Now, cutting these golf balls up, I've always wanted to say this. It's the ones I did earlier. We see Pro V1. Pro V1, I believe, is a three cover golf ball. It's got the outer cover, it's got the slightly inner cover, and then the middle core, which is more of a solid core. I don't know what that means, but I just thought I'd show it you. Pro V1X is four piece. You see the outer cover, inner cover, then you've got an inner core, and then you've got a, a center core. And um, that's helping, I guess, with more spin rate. I would, that's the only reason why it would be more spinny. I don't know enough about golf ball cores to be able to tell you enough information about that, but I like to see inside the golf balls anyway, just because we don't get to see it often. So, interesting there, the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X. If I read all the information on these boxes, it just, every single golf box says the same. It's ridiculous. Every golf box says longer distance, lower spin, blah de blah blah de blah The boxes are useless. Forget them. If you're gonna test golf balls, test them yourself, and you've gotta test them on the putting green first, and then work your way back. Go putting green to get the feel, go chip shots, pitch shots, and then if you have the luxury of being able to hit the actual golf ball on a GC2 and get some numbers off the data, brilliant. That'd be, that'd be amazing. But really, you can test a golf ball just on the softness in the field for what you're after. That, and that is individual for everybody that's watching this video. The same feelings I got here, the soft feel off the putter, the quiet sound off the putter, might not be the same feelings and descriptions you would get if you tested this golf ball. So I've got loads more golf ball testing coming soon. Um, that was the Pro V1, how they're seeing it as number one golf ball in, in golf. I think Titleist as a brand is probably the highest selling golf ball in golf, uh, but uh, companies are catching up. Companies are catching up very fast as well. There's lots of new golf balls out at the moment and they are fighting for this spot. They want to replace Pro V1s. So next re review I've got coming up is the TaylorMade TP5. Stay tuned for that. And I've got loads more golf balls. When I was in Spain, I tested 22 different types of golf balls. Let us know what you think about the review. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Sorry it's a bit long-winded, but I think it's an important aspect of the game that should never be overlooked. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, by the way, don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button. I'd appreciate that. Thanks a lot.